Thank you for joining us for our online worship service. Some things to note. Everything in our service will be available upon your screen. We invite you to join in praying out loud in the bold print through our readings, participating in our offering, as well as getting ready some bread and wine or water for you to use if you would like to receive communion today. Welcome to worship with us today. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ in seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Please join me for the prayer of the day. O oh God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us, and by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Good morning. Our first lesson from today comes from Job 38, 1 to 11. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkness counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment in thick darkness, its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no further, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Our second reading today comes from Psalm 107, 1 to 3, 23 to 32. Please read responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the winds of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from the distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper and silenced the waves of the sea. Then they were glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people, in the council of the elders. Let them sing Alleluia. Our third reading for today is from 2 Corinthians 6, verses 1 to 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamity, beating, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. In honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today comes from Mark 4, 35 through 41. Jesus stills the sea. On that day, when evening came, he said to them, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, 
hush, be still. And the wind died down and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They became very much afraid and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The storm is frequently used as a metaphor for difficulties and challenges in the scripture and in life. In this case, the disciples were perplexed that he was sleeping through the storm while they felt they were sinking. I get motion sickness pretty easily, so I probably would have been hanging over the side while someone else woke him. He immediately fixed the situation, and then they were afraid. Jesus appears to be disappointed that they hadn't figured it out yet. It seems like this was what they wanted him to do. I spent the first 10 years of my life in West Texas which was known for some pretty severe storms. One of the illustrations in our Sundays and Seasons book is about a tornado in the Fort Worth, Texas area. I actually had several personal illustrations of my own I could use. So I chose to use the one that had my dad not had a good eye for storms. I may not be here today. This was before they had early warning systems for tornadoes resembling air raid sirens, warning people to take cover in Texas. You just hope someone in the family had a good eye for nasty clouds, and luckily that was my dad. On May 11th of 1953, a tornado tore across North San Angelo, Texas, killing 13 people and injuring 159. It took a direct hit in the Lakeview neighborhood where my dad was pastor of the Lakeview Baptist Church located across the street from its parsonage, our home. My mother and I were in the parsonage across the street from the church. I was a couple of months shy of my third birthday. Anytime you got a cloud with a certain look, you took shelter until it went by. Up here, I've been known to say if I was in Texas and saw that cloud, I'd be looking for a cellar. My dad had either found out a storm was coming or had seen a cloud he didn't like and called our music director and his wife, Bill and Myra Denton, who were across the street at the church and had them come to the house because it had been built more recently and was sturdier than the church building. We all huddled in the middle of the house when the storm hit. I remember dad saying it sounded like a freight train coming through. It leveled our church building across the street from us, but the house stood. God had plans for the five people in that house, all who served many ways in a variety of churches over the years. I remember pe hearing people say it was like the end of the world. Even though I have no conscious memory, I still have post-traumatic stress syndrome about certain storms. I remember seeing a picture of the level church building across the street in a newspaper with a caption that said, death of a church. My dad had a sermon he preached at later churches he pastored saying it wasn't the death of a church, but it was the birth of a church. We built a new brick building and added educational space. As time went on a couple of blocks over with plenty of room for growth. As a little girl, I remember tagging along with my dad on construction sites as different buildings were added. By the time he left in 1957, the church had increased significantly in growth. It's difficult for me to give exact details as I pulled a lot of this from childhood memory and never really planned on speaking on the subject. We did get an early warning system for tornadoes soon after that, and I spent a lot of my childhood 
heading for cover, but we were never in a direct hit like that again. As today is Father's Day, I'm missing my dad. He's been gone for a couple of years, but had plenty of good memories. He was my hero. He wasn't perfect by far, but when he missed the mark, he admitted it and said he was sorry, which was not easy for a man of that generation. He loved Jesus and he wanted to help bring as many people into the kingdom of God as possible. Storms have many times been used as imagery for difficulties. It helps if ahead of times, we have been able to figure out where to go for safety. I totaled a car one time by hitting a small piece of ice and clearing the median and going over to the other side. I tried to turn the wheel and slide down the other side. Instead, I spun out. I thought at the time, this is a really neat ride if I don't die. A guy coming down the other side T-boned me, but miraculously, neither one of us were hurt. I had no doubt that time the Lord had protected me from the storm. Another time I was stopped at a light and I noticed a father with his young daughter in a car seat next to him before airbags when you could do that. He was blocking the sun from her eyes with his hand. She was oblivious to the fact that her dad was protecting her eyes and ensuring her comfort. I thought to myself, I wonder how often God is protecting us from the storm and we are oblivious. Having experienced the ups and downs of a number of churches, in denominations that are not as diverse as one might think, I've seen a number of similar patterns. One of them is sometimes we think, we tend to think that what we want to happen is God's will for the church rather than earnestly seeking his will. The good news is I don't see any of that happening at Bethany right now. I see the people of Bethany as earnestly seeking God's direction for how to best grow in their personal relationship with God through their trust in Jesus. This includes a strong desire to serve the community and see the spiritual body of Bethany continue to grow and be a vibrant part of the local picture for many years to come. The Lord has brought us as a church through some serious storms, both financially and spiritually, but we have survived and come through with the ability to grow. Through the leadership of Pastor Megan, we have grown much stronger, learned how to look beyond ourselves, opened up ourselves to diverse types of people, and she has taught us we are enough to do God's work here. Today, we celebrate our earthly fathers, are those who stood in when earthly fathers failed or weren't available. Let us reach out to our heavenly father, who is always available. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God has made us new people through our baptism into Christ and our response of faith. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be known to all peoples, Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the water are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worthwhile and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You dwell with us in the faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness. And through their leadership, you may be exalted in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. We lift our voices, our hands up to the Lord in response to the generous gifts God shares with us. Each week we share our gifts for ministry in our offering. To continue with your offering, checks may be mailed to the church office. You can also give electronically. Visit bethanylongview.org slash coronavirus for links to give online or via Give Plus app. We give thanks for the gifts God shares with us. We give thanks for the abundant life God brings us. And we give thanks for you.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. All are welcome to the Lord's table. You do not need to be a member of our church or our denomination to commune with us virtually. We invite you during this time to feel the Spirit's presence and join the entire body of Christ together. You may use bread or wine, juice, water in your home. You may give to one another or listen to the voice saying, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ given for you. You may also choose to fast from this communion today and hear this blessing. You belong to God and you are loved. You are not alone. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, 
we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.